Yeah. Wow. What do you think of that ride? Oh, that was just tremendous. Top of the Healy Pass on a stunning day. We were really excited about our route today because it involved riding some amazing roads including the stunning Healy Pass and quite a lot of the Ring of Kerry before getting to our final destination of Port McGee. So good morning folks from the bowels of the Maritime Hotel. I had a brilliant night last night here in Bantry. Great meal, um, great beer obviously. And today the weather looks fantastic. So today we're off to Port McGee via, first of all, the Healy Pass and part of the Ring of Kerry. So we'll check in on the road. Strictly speaking, the Healy Pass isn't on the Wild Atlantic Way, but we'd heard so much about it and it came highly recommended as one of the most stunning rides in Ireland. Not to mention the 12 kilometres of hairpin bends. It was just too good to miss. <laughs> After we left Bantry, I couldn't help but notice in my rearview mirror a solo motorcyclist who seemed to be following our exact route at a distance. The Healy Pass is one of the most spectacular mountain passes in the whole of Ireland. And even though it wasn't on the Wild Atlantic Way, it was well worth taking a detour. And the truth is, I didn't even know it existed until I watched a video by Dave Perry of Wheelie Good TV. Go and check out his channel for more great ideas of where to ride in Ireland. The mystery of the solo motorcyclist solved. It turns out our fellow biker was Tim, a local rider who follows the channel. He pulled over to say hi just before the pass when we stopped to change the GoPro batteries. Sorry we didn't get a photo, Tim, but thanks for stopping by to say hello. We hope you're enjoying our Wild Atlantic Way adventures. Mystery solved and it was on to the pass.
Wow. Been here. So what do you think of that ride? Oh, that was just tremendous. Here we are, Beautiful. folks. Top of the Healy Pass on a stunning day. I mean, this is not typical Irish weather, I would guess, but it's beautiful. Reminds us of Black Bar in Scotland. Look at that. It's stunning. The pass was created in 1847 during the famine years in order to help prevent starvation. It's named after Timothy Michael Healy, a Cork politician who asked that the bridleway winding through the pass be upgraded and improved. Famine roads are common in Ireland and were part of Robert Peel's Conservative Government initiative to improve Ireland's infrastructure, strengthen its economy, provide employment for those who had lost an income as a result of the failure of the potato crop in 1845. But basically the scheme didn't work through bad management, lack of tools and the physical condition of the workers. Low wages and the delays in payment led to its eventual abandonment. But not before workers died at the side of the road due to the gross negligence on behalf of the authorities. Well, that's certainly one of the best rides we've ever done. Stunning scenery and fantastic weather. I'm so glad we did it, even though it wasn't part of the main Wild Atlantic Way. I guess I expected the views to be as beautiful as Balakna Bar, and they were, but the roads were wider so meeting cars coming the opposite way really didn't matter. It was also largely smooth tarmac and a real pleasure to ride. And I can on my skin Begin to fall from within Today and not tomorrow
For a coffee stop in Ken, is it Kenmore, Kenmare? <laughs> Look at this, two flat rides and a meal fur. Perfect. Well, that was a fantastic coffee stop with a great flat white and a mill fur. Apparently, Ken Mare is famous for its gourmet food and accommodation. It's also been recognised as one of Europe's most beautiful small towns. CNN Travel have named 50 of the prettiest towns in Europe, and apparently, Ken Mare was on the list. Obviously, a place to stay next time we visit. Any excuse to come back. The Ring of Kerry is one of Ireland's most popular drives and attracts thousands of tourists every year. Essentially, it's a ring road on the N70 that's about 111 miles long. It's a beautifully scenic route and you can see why it's so popular. Thankfully, we had the opportunity to ride a good half of it on the road to Port McGee. From all things at once Without thinking twice And I knew it would catch up And that we would be the ones Left behind mm. The stories I've been told They never seem to leave my mind mm. And this road that I am on Gotta stay here for some time Time has gone and I grew up I somehow made it through without Sight. Mm. And I still wonder where you are And if you found a way out From the dark mm. The stories I've been told They never seem to leave my mind mm. And this road that I am on I gotta stay here for some time Here, hanging on, waiting for 
for your call. We did notice quite a lot of tourist coaches coming in the opposite direction. We had read somewhere while Bri was planning the route that most of the tourist coaches travel north to south along the Wild Atlantic Way. Having planned to ride south to north, that certainly seemed to be our experience. In fact, we didn't get stuck behind a single coach for the entire journey and we'll certainly remember that for our return trip. Rivers gonna cry when you're gone, 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 gone. Rivers gonna cry when you're gone, 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 gone. Rivers gonna cry when you're gone, 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 gone. Rivers gonna cry when you are. The little village of Waterville is the only seafront village on the Ring of Kerry. Renowned for its game angling and its 18 hole championship golf course, but possibly most famous for the place where Charlie Chaplin spent many years on holiday. Hey, I was hoping you would stay, but I've always known that you would go and find your own way. I still see when we climbed up in those trees, 12 years old, feel the wind. Watch the river run And the sun would always shine When we sat there, you and I The river's gonna cry when you're Gone, 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 gone The river's gonna cry when you're Gone, 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 gone The river's gonna cry when you're Gone, 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 gone The river's gonna cry when you're Port McGee is a beautiful, picturesque little fishing village. It shot to fame when the filming of both Star Wars, The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi took place on the nearby Skellig Islands. In fact, the pub we're staying in is where Luke Skywalker used to go for his Guinness. It was also voted best tourist town in Ireland in 2012. But we grew up this old town Just leave it all behind The river's gonna cry when you're gone Here we are folks, just arrived at our final destination today and The day has been glorious, as you can see the sun is out, it's fantastic Brilliant riding And we're here in Port McGee Tiny little, seems like a fishing village Anyway, we've just checked in to our little uh, hotel stroke restaurant so let's go and check out the room and here we are quite hot because the sun's been out all day it's uh, not very spacious but it's clean and bright shower room decent sized bed not a huge amount of space is there <laughs> which a bit different to last I night mean, well see we have nothing but a varied accommodation we've got on our tours. It's fine, darling. It's clean, like you say. Yeah. It's functional. It's a bit tight for space. It's fine. It'd be and interesting to see how the restaurant and the service and everything else go. Right. A bit disappointed with parking, I have to say. But yeah. But let's have a look at that This is on. the first time we've parked in an unsecure place. We'll see. Anyway, it's Guinness o'clock soon, so let's go and check it out. Port McGee is actually named after a notorious 18th century smuggler, Captain Theobald McGee. Is 
tofu chowder again. Three days in a row, but it's just too good to turn down. Having beef and Guinness stew. And it looks incredible. And I'm going with the mussels. Mm -hmm. and and fries. Wow. Wash down by about the shot. So what are our thoughts on the Moorings Hotel in Port McGee? The Moorings is a hotel restaurant and bar in the small peninsula village of Port McGee, just off the R565. It is officially on the main Wild Atlantic Way route, so a convenient stop off and a particularly beautiful place as you can see from our evening pictures. Our room was number one and we thought it was fairly small particularly in light of our previous night's accommodation. But it was clean with a wardrobe and drawers for all our kit. The bathroom was also somewhat compact with a small shower cubicle, loo and sink. Checking in and out was fast and friendly and the service in the restaurant was exceptional. The food was really special with lots of choice of meat and fresh fish. The beef Guinness stew and the fresh mussels were a very good choice. The parking was disappointing. Booking.com had mentioned that parking was one of its most popular facilities but there was in fact no allocated parking or a secure car park. And whilst we were told on checking that we could leave the bikes on the road around the back, we chose to park them at the front of the hotel where they were overlooked by some rooms. Acknowledging our concern, the lovely restaurant manager did offer to have a shed cleared to enable us to secure the bikes. But we felt that that would have been quite an imposition during a busy dinner time. It wasn't ideal and if I'm honest made for a disturbed night for both of us. And while some people wouldn't have worried too much it would really have impacted on our choice of accommodation if we'd known in advance. Other than parking it really was a lovely place to visit. Mm -hmm. 